All right, you haven't seen me, but I've been like doing my own little dance here as I get all psyched up to uh, show you one of my favorite tools and one of the tools that we've been using a lot since uh, March. Uh, so welcome, you are now joining into our Unleash Student Creativity We Video webinar. Again, on the our, currently on the screen is the opportunity where you can grab a copy of the slides yourself or the questions. And I'll come back to this slide again in the future if you haven't uh, grabbed a copy yet. So uh, without further ado, welcome. Uh, we are just going to uh, uh, start in the best possible way. And one of the most beautiful things I think about um, the beautiful Indigenous uh, talks, Tuesday Indigenous talks that uh, Aaron Doak and Grandmaster Smith have been hosting is just what a wonderful ancient wisdom that they're bringing to reframing how we feel about everything going on here about COVID. And that as we share uh, this unceded territory on Algonquin land, that we can really get in touch with nature again in a way that is, is beautiful and recognizes the infinite wisdom that has been here on Pinnell Island for such a long time. And so if you'll pray with me, so in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I can't change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, so just a quick little introduction to our team here. All four of us are all here to support you in your schools, uh, in your uh, development of professional uh, styles between now and September and then even in September we are here to support you and we love getting your questions so I'm going to introduce my co-host this afternoon hello everybody I'm Catherine Wake I'm going to be taking your questions so feel free to fill out the form feel free to ask them on Twitter with the hashtag OCSVLT uh, and then I will ask them at the end uh, and you can keep them coming all throughout because we keep track of them so very much looking forward to this webinar because I know Steph is going to crush it. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Wake. So it is her birthday tomorrow, if you notice the balloon over her shoulder. So um, we just love to celebrate um, our fabulous people here in this department. So again, you can take a look at our uh, Twitter handles there. Our emails are pretty easy to find. We all have unique names in uh, the OCSB. So again, reach out to all of us. We'd love to support you. So a little agenda for today, we're going to look at why we would want to use something like WeVideo. We're going to look at a little bit of an overview. I'm going to give you some real basics. So if that's where you want to hang out, great. Then I'm going to show you how to get fancy and a little bit more creative, depending on our time, how much fancy we'll get into will be a whole other bottle of wax. Some tips and tricks. Again, this is a tool we've been using uh, for our hashtag OCSB how to videos. So we have become intimately connected to this program and we're really happy with what it can do. Um, and they've really developed it so it's um, really user friendly. So both for your kiddos and for you. And I hope that you get an opportunity, even maybe play with your own kiddos at home. Um, this might be something that you can help um, uh, deepen the creativity that your, your own um, families might have in terms of um, expressing their learning. So then we're also gonna look at some ideas where you can get some more ideas, more concepts, uh, how you can pull in more things to WeVideo once you start getting used to the program, and then where you can go for more help. So if you um, just want to watch some more videos, uh, maybe I go too quickly, maybe you get stuck on a particular idea and you'd be like, I bet you WeVideo can do that, but Pearson didn't talk about it. There is lots of stuff for that as well. So one of the reasons we love um, any of these creativity tools is that it really offers new ways for students to express themselves. We know that students really struggle sometimes with a blank page. You say, tell me a story. Well, a blank page, where do they get stimulus for that? Even if you give them a graphic organizer, if they don't know, they can go and pull pictures. Or if they, um, they don't know, they can use color or all of those things. When we increase students' ability to be more creative, we stimulate more of those brain paths. And as a result, we get higher thinking. So we really want to um, we want you to think about how do we use we something like we video in order to stimulate those different ideas with the students. Um, we all know what it's like to have class presentations, and you're looking at your class of 30 or 35, and you're like, how am I going to get through all these presentations? Well, we video, Screencastify, these sort of tools allow you to capture allow students to capture their own their own voice, their presentation 
and they can practice and practice, record and record and record until they feel really proud of it. And then that's something that you can then either play in front of the class or just use in small groups or just for you so that you can really capture whether those students have those um, skills in their presentations, especially when it comes to the English or the French curriculum where um, an oral component is an absolute necessary part of the, the curriculum as opposed to all those other courses that don't actually have an oral comp component in them. But sometimes we want students to explain their thinking. That's that observation and conversation. Well, this is a really great tool for you to capture some of those conversations, but that thinking, making thinking visible in these sort of tools. This also allows you to accommodate students who have anxiety around speaking in crowds. Again, they can record and, and make something happen. I've even seen students who didn't wanna uh, speak on the video, they wrote a script which they provided for me and then they had one of their siblings or their friends dictate the, the speech as well. And you'll find out on a Wee video, there's lots of opportunity for text. So they could even type their text right into the Wee video to express the thinking. Uh, again, capture conversations that you're not available for. Uh, Wee video does have a screencast option. Um, it's a little less uh, easy to use than Screencastify, but again, it may be an option where you're having two students or three students have a collaborative conversation and you wanna capture that. This is another tool to do that. ESL students, so they may not be able to pull the words in English, but they do know their words in their own language and being able to have one prompt and be able to look through a series of uh, pre, uh, preloaded content to be able to find those tools, those images that they really wanna know. Maybe they don't know the word forest, you give them forest and then they can pull out why different forests might look different, right? They can pull that those images out and demonstrate that learning to you. And finally, um, students are engaged in the media. They are watching YouTube videos. They are watching Snapchats. They are watching Instagram Live. And there's a real interest in students in how they can develop those skills too. Certainly when we were working in grade two and three classes, they'd be like, can I be the next YouTube star? Have at her kid, just ask your parents permission. But those are the things that we really want to be able to capture. Um, that those are something, it's, it's that connection between I'm just doing this for my teacher versus I'm doing this for someone to, to to watch and to, and to enjoy that is outside of my school. So when we talk about um, the importance of allowing this creativity, we're really talking about that elevated concept of Bloom's taxonomy. They're analyzing, they're th synthesizing, they're evaluating. When you're given, when you're looking for a word like um, cell biology, right? There are lots of preloaded videos in we video about cells and cancer and biology. Well. Students are having to synthesize, okay, these are all kinds of videos, which one actually shows what I want it to? Oh, okay, now I'm synthesizing. Now I'm putting it together in a whole other way to really evaluate what do I actually understand about cell biology? And perhaps it's even, you can even look at it and this idea that we are modifying something that we already have and transmediating it. We're taking it from one concept into another concept. So we're really doing that modification or even redefinition. We're, we're asking kids to say, Instead of just regurgitating these things from the textbook, how can you show these things from the textbook? How can you show me that you understand it by selecting images and music and text that tells me you understand it? Um, so we're just gonna walk through some basics. I did leave here a really short little video um, on this document. Again, much shorter, easy to share with your students as well. Um, if you wanna move forward with this in June. Um, but both students and staff find the excuse me, the we video on the portal, and I'll show you that in a second. And when you go through the portal, it automatically logs you on with Google. So again, single sign-on couldn't be easier. As I mentioned, it captures oral and visual student thinking. It has a webcam option. It has a screencast, it podcasts. You can make GIFs now, which is a brand new feature they just added. And of course, one of the greatest tools is using something like a green screen. So we'll talk a little bit about that. It already has a ton of pre-populated data. So uh, for our little people, that's the best thing ever. So um, our team spent a few days working at uh, St. Thomas More doing healthy eating videos with their students. So we had a list of criteria that we wanted the students to be able to do, which involved finding some media, finding, doing a voiceover, um, doing some green screen where they're green screening and there's uh, like apples floating around behind them. So there's some really neat, and those kids were engaged for hours. You can also use it as a podcast tool. So a lot of, we know that teachers are moving away from doing essays to doing podcasts. So 
Um, we'll show you how that works. There's a, uh, basically you can do a, a like a, a video and then just remove the audio to it, or you can just record the audio and again, splice that together. And then of course, as I mentioned, create and export GIFs. So again, um, when you have finished your V video, you can use the interface of WeVideo to share it. You can export it. So we've been doing that. We've been exporting it to a YouTube channel. You can also download it and save it right to Drive. So we know, again, that's the easiest thing for our students to do. Once it's in Drive, they can put it in shareable links. They can take those, um, those final edits, um, exports, and put it in a card in Hapra. So there's lots of ways that students can share their thinking. Okay. You can again share by link, also through email. Um, you can collaborate, so you can make a project where a few people are working on the same edit, or they're using the same set of media in order to create different things with it. There's templates. You can start from scratch, which we're going to do today, and you can actually change the complexity of the tool by using a timeline or storyboard mode. So again, we've seen this successfully used in grade two all the way through grade 12. So I've never been brave enough to use it with somebody uh, younger than grade twos, but it's certainly something that little people can handle. All right, so this is a little, so I'm gonna leave this slide for you. And this is something for when we're finished, I really challenge you to try to use this in the next couple of days, because otherwise you're gonna forget what you've learned. So you teacher, you educator, I want you to jump in and actually try some of these tools. And this little, this slide here, I don't remember what slide this is, slide 10 is, is a little step-by-step, -step, things that we wanna challenge you to do while you're doing it. So I'm gonna model that for you right now. Oh, wait, so the next thing I'm gonna do, so I want to show you on the staff portal where you find it. So I'm just gonna switch over here to the staff portal, okay? We're gonna scroll on down and it's down here, we video. Again, I'm just gonna click on it. And because I'm on the staff portal and because I'm logged into Chrome, it will be one click. So here I go. Boom, I'm in, okay? So this thing makes things very easy. So what I'm gonna do right now actually is I'm gonna switch from whole screen mode to a tab mode so that you can hear um, what I'm actually creating in WeVideo. All right, so here we are in we video. okay? So this is the dashboard, this is the default screen that you get brought to, okay? Um, you can see here that as part of the premium package, we have so many hours of um, export time that we can use, and trust me, we've been using this tool so much, and I am nowhere near finishing my, my, uh, my time. You can also see that we have tons of storage again i challenge you to use up 220,000 gigs of uh, storage device there's a user guide right here so again if you need uh, written instructions you can use that one and across the top you have dashboards projects media exports templates i have the admin because i'm special okay so um so what you basically do once you come into we video you're going to decide what do i want to do so again we're going to start it nice and simple we're actually going to just start with the video because i want to show you how this all works all right so here i am going into video so the first thing it's going to ask is where do you want to get started it'll default to my projects um but if i click on this arrow here at the side I can see all the different videos and all the projects that I'm involved in. And as I use this more and more and more, I've been really trying to make sure I use the, the organizational file tools inside of video to make that much easier. So I'm just gonna use my bits and bolts. So this is where it's gonna add. So anything that I've used, all this, the data I've used in that project, I'll be able to have access to. So then I'm gonna hit start editing. So one other thing that you might get, depending on what you're trying to do with your students or what kind of feeling, one of the things you can change is right here, you can actually change what layout your students use. So a one-to-one -one would be something that they'd want to put on Instagram. Nine by 16 would be uh, you want to show it on a phone. And then 16 by nine is your movie theater type thing. So let's just walk around what this interface actually looks like. So we have our, our hot dogs here at the top. So this gives us a whole raft of options. One of the things that you probably would use a little bit in this one is your save option. We video automatically saves, but just in case you're looking, there's a save option there. And you'll notice as I hover over it, you'll see control S. So you can control S and save it where it is. 
it does auto save every minute or so, um, but sometimes that's just nice to know. Okay, one of the tools that we often use, again, if you're using it um, uh, and just trying to play around, is to play this idea of storyboard. So you can, when I switch to storyboard, this whole piece at the bottom becomes much, much more simplistic. So again, allows you to drag and drop a little bit more quickly. Um, this is definitely something that I would encourage you to play with, but we're going to use the heavy duty option because, you know, you guys are solid. All right. So next thing we go across the top. So this little, so that's the hot dog. Across here, I'm going to give this a name. So I'm going to call this web one demo. So there's my name. There's my video, and it's already captured it there. I can use themes. So think about themes as being those filters you use on Instagram to make you look extra fabulous. Um, so I can choose a theme, and when I choose a theme, you can hear the audio right there. So it chooses music for you. Um, it replaces transitions, so the translations all look the same. And you can also change all the formatting. So this becomes a really great way to make your, your, your entire video look really uh, put together. I'm going to click on a different one so that you can see, you can hear the music's different. You can see that the overlay of the video is a little bit different. And again, this is a really easy way to kind of make a very quick video look really polished. I'm going to go with no theme, but I want you to know that they're there. Okay. Then linked resources, this is maybe where you might, um, if you had a script, you might attach it to a script so that you know it's there and available, okay? Not something we use a lot, but it is there for an option. Across here, you have little um, icons that tell you these are all different places to find and add to your sources, and we'll talk about that in a second. This is your preview screen. So it's really tempting to want to click over here you can't click here when you're on this version of a screen. I will show you at one point where this becomes an active place you can touch, but you can't actually use this screen for anything. And then of course, at the very end, you're gonna have the finish button, okay? As we rotate down towards the, the bottom of the screen, you can see that the default is two videos, one audio, okay? So imagine these are, excuse me, layered tracks. So your main video, is gonna be one, and anything you want to lay on top of that is gonna go into video two. So for example, um, let's say I'm gonna take this Open Seas video, and I want to, I'm gonna overlay something. So did you see, all I did was grab one of these videos, it defaults at the C, so I'm gonna drag and drop, I'm gonna drag and drop, and you'll notice when I drag and drop, it goes from a gray and then it goes green because it's saying you can put that here. But if I drag it over top of the old one, you can see that it's yellow and it's saying, oh, I'm gonna have questions for you, okay? It might also be red, which is, uh-uh, you can't put that here. So there it is, there's the red, uh-uh, you can't put that here. Oh, we'll put it here, but we have questions. And then green, sure, have at it. So I'm gonna put it here just so you can see what the options are. So when I have the yellow and I've said, yep, do that, it's giving me some options. So it's either asking me, do I want to replace what it is? If there was an open space, it might, I would be able to option trim to fit, which is basically like it would cut that video to the exact size that would fit in the space that was there or insert and push, which is one of my favorites because it's just like pushing yourself between a bus seat. You just push yourself in there and now you've got a spot, okay? So I have three little, scenes here so there's my ocean and then i can skip over so one of the ways uh shortcut that i use is is the space bar has the video play okay so again there's my oceans anybody getting seasick yet and now we're gonna push down and then the next one we're gonna go a little under the sea under the sea so you can imagine there there's already again three clips very different feels of what the ocean actually has to do it so um, I hope that's starting to get you, your eye, your your uh, your teacher centers going. Going, ooh, how could I use this? So, further to that, so that's just dragging and dropping, easy peasy. Okay, now I want to do I want to do something with a turtle. Okay, so now it's only showing me turtles. But what I want you to show is each one of these has a little piece of information in the corner. These little um, 
clips, it's showing you this video is originally 30 seconds long. This one is 19 seconds long. This is 17 seconds, okay? So I'm gonna drag our total friend, and again, he's gonna go, I'm gonna insert and push. So there's our total friend there, okay? But maybe I don't want it to be, how long was it? 17 seconds long. So now that it's orange, so orange means the clip itself is surrounded in orange. So what that means is now I can do something with it. So I'm gonna grab the right-hand side and I'm going to shrink. So now you can see as I do that, I'm gonna zoom in again. Now that you can see that I'm doing, it's giving me um, a time to show you how long that clip actually is now. So again, if you're looking at trying to keep it within a 30 second time clip or whatever, that becomes really useful. So now that clip is shorter, I wanna connect this one. And so this one's now uh, nine seconds and this one's 20 seconds, okay? So again, I have added it, I've clipped it, and I also wanna clip this one. Oh, it's just so long. So I'm gonna clip it to eight seconds, but uh-oh, now I have this spot. What am I gonna do? Well, I have a few options. So a trick that we've learned is if I click off the actual, I'm gonna make this bigger again. If I click actually off the clips that I need and I'm gonna hold down my, my mouse button, I'm going to select. So I'm holding and moving on my trackpad. So now I've just got that box and you'll notice that I've selected all of those clips. So now all three of those clips, I can move in tandem. So you see how they're all in blue now? I can now squish them up against that shortened clip, okay? And you'll find when we start adding a little bit more um, layering to this, that it then becomes uh, really imperative to be able to keep our pieces together, all right? So that's our stock media, very easy, all right. So now we're gonna to go to my media. So this is the way to think about this is stuff that, that I wanna upload. So you can see that I have all kinds of stuff in here already, um, but I want to import something. So I'm gonna to go to import and I can browse to select, which will allow me to go to my computer or the other one that might be really handy to you is going into your Google Drive. So I'm gonna to browse to select and I can see here that, let's see here, let's go to my desktop. And I'm going to pull this fabulous Bitmoji of me in here and bang, there she is, okay? So she's loading, you can see that she's loading in there because uh, of that little blue swirly line at the bottom. And now I can pull this in. So here I go, I'm going to pull my media into my uh, document. What do you see immediately? Well, because of this Bitmoji, because it's invisible around the outside, it automatically is invisible, and so it's only my Bitmoji that's showing. I'll show you something a little bit different than that. So here if I go to, imp I'm gonna import something else. I'm gonna import this lovely Jamboard that I have a picture of, okay? Again, it's another different picture. So you can see right there, even on the difference between how those look in WeVideo. So this one's got the black outrun. It suggests that it's probably going to be empty behind it, which again is different than the cat, and we'll look at the cat in a little bit. So again, different. Now this is another type of photo, an image. So now I'm going to drag this in. So now when I drag it in, look what happens in my preview. So I've got my preview, I'll move this over so it's a little easier for you to see. So in my preview, and again, we're looking over here in my preview. So when I hit go, there's my water with my Bitmoji face, but notice all of a sudden, bang, my ocean disappears. Why? Well, again, it's because of layering. I've layered this solid image over top of my ocean image, which, for example, might really work for you. Maybe you wanna draw attention to something else um, while other audio is playing or something like that, but it switches. But here's the other trick. Every single one of these, these clips if we click on it it gives us a whole other host of things that we can do with it so let's double click on this last image that i i brought in so i'm going to double click and bang i have a whole new set of things okay so over here now this is actually manipulative manipulative <laughs> so i can do various things i can rotate that image 
And you'll notice as soon as I, Im I rotate it, I actually get my ocean scene behind it. So again, might be useful for layering, okay? I can also flip it. So it'll flip upside down, okay? I can also change the fit. So these two images say I want it to fit the whole screen or I want it to fit just part of the screen. I can also scale it. So I can pull it and scale. And here's the thing that I love. It doesn't need to stay in the, in the middle. So now that I've made it smaller, I can actually drag and drop. And all of a sudden now I have picture on picture. So you can do two videos, okay? So I'm just gonna cheat, um, I'm just gonna save changes so that I'm gonna actually show you how this works. So here's my turtle and my C. So I'm going to double click again on my turtle and I get the same options. But notice, here I am scaling my turtle to a smaller image and now when I play it, you'll notice that both my image of my C and my turtle are moving. So you can do video on video. Again, really great for simulating uh, news reports, okay? Other options that I have, I can animate it. So I can have, um, I can move it between different places. So this would be my start. And if I wanted to end, I might scale in to my turtle that way. So now if I play it, you can see that I zoom into my turtle. Again, maybe drawing a specific image to something. Okay, I really encourage you to play around with all these settings. You can also change the color. So perhaps you want it to look a little greener. You maybe want it so you can play with all of these. I'll get to color coding in a second. And it also shows you the speed. So this becomes really handy if you're showing like a lesson or something. You can speed up the boring part of the lesson or you can speed up something that you wanted might have wanted to do. So again, you can increase the speed or decrease the speed um, and how much. So you can actually indicate, so this is telling us that it's 8.8 .8 seconds, but at 3.8 seconds, I'm gonna have it speed up. So in between these two sections, I'm gonna have everything speed up. I've actually haven't played with this in a while, so I'm gonna do changes and see what happens. So here I go, because again, creativity is all about play. So here I go, here's my ocean. And here's my turtle, zooming in, zooming out. And it uh, doesn't look like a whole lot is happening. But again, this is kind of how we, how we learn to play with a tool, what's possible. And trust me, students will figure all of this out. So next thing along the line, we're gonna look at, um, okay, let's do more media. So record is that I can actually use my webcam to record. I can also do a screen or I can use both. What this will do, once you enable this, it'll actually push a, um, a extension to your Chromebook because that will actually allow that to happen. So we're not gonna play with that, but just know it's possible, okay? The last one is a narrate. So I'm gonna hit the narrate button and I am going to record. I actually didn't try this with a neat one. We're gonna try it right now. So here I am recording. It's cutting me down on my record. And I would like lots of things to happen. And here is my recording and it's amazing, goodbye. So I am going, I can record again, I can hear it or I can save it. So I'm just gonna save because I'm wild and crazy like that, okay? So when you record an audio, if you'll notice on the bottom of my bar, where did it go? I know I recorded something, but where did it go? You'll notice that there is a gray slide back and forth here as well as a gray slide back and forth here. When I scroll bar, so that's what it's called, not a slide back and forth, but you knew what I was meant. So now I'm going to slide this right, or this up and down one, and you'll notice there's my audio right there. So it actually adds an additional tool down here that adds a voiceover. So again, if I want my students to explain their thinking about the, the videos that they've selected, I might ask them to do a voiceover and then it's gonna add to their video, okay? And then I can move this around, okay? So if I hit play again, I would like lots of things to happen and here is my recording and it's amazing, goodbye. Okay, so again, you get the point of how this is gonna all start working, okay? 
Um, so that's that. So those are import, record, and narrate. All right. Moving along the top, we're going to look at text. Now, text gets wild and crazy. So when we teach this to students, we basically say you need to have these five components before you can start going wild and crazy. And one of the components we ask is include a text line. So I'm lucky in that I left a little space here at the front to include a text. So I am going to use, I'm gonna use this one, okay? So here I am, I'm taking it, I'm dragging it over, and look, it's turning red. So it's not liking going in there. So what I need to do is actually move, highlight and move my items down the timeline a bit so that I can now put in that document. Again, what does that look like? Oh, if I want to delete it, it's orange, I could just hit backspace. So I'm going to do it again. So here's my tiramisu. It's one of Catherine Wake's favorite foods. All right, so um, I'm going to add that in there. I'm going to move these back, okay? And now I'm going to, like everything, double click on the click, clip, and see what happens. So here I'm double clicking. So happy birthday, Wake, okay? The other thing I can do, so I can change the fonts, okay? Let's choose the ugliest fonts. Ooh, Galaxy, a little Star Wars action for those kiddos who really wanna be able to do that, and Meriwether. All right, I can also change the colors. So I'm gonna do a nice blue here. And again, I can change how that text looks. I can change how big it is on the page, okay? And I can also say where it's gonna come up on the page by using these this tool over on the right hand side okay so now i'm going to save changes okay and i'm just going to hit play and you can see it's on a black screen but black is boring so again here again opportunity where i can maybe drag another stock media so here's my stock media i'm going to pop him in there or not let's do let's oh here another tool i can show you i'm looking in stock media i've looked for the turtle and i want a still image so I can go over here to still and just choose images so here's my turtle or I guess this would be a tortoise okay and so now I'm gonna drag that open a little bit and now when I hit go uh oh that's not what I wanted I wanted the text to be on top of the turtle well turns out that I'm just gonna need to organize things again differently so I'm gonna slide that up and again, I want my text on top of my turtle. Remember, the language will help us tell us what we need to do. Oh, that was not right. So I just hit Control Z, which is my undo. I'm gonna shrink this little turtle again by pulling the side so that he'll fit in right here. And now, what do we notice? I have my turtle underneath my, my title. My title is on top of my turtle. So now, there's my happy birthday wake on top of my turtle and then we get to the deliciousness of the open ocean, okay? So again, these are things that we want to uh, start to shake the shame. So back to text, all kinds of different things in there. Um, tons and tons of options. These are all ones that move. So as we add them, they have different things to offer. So I'm just gonna show you what that one looks like. Um, lots of opportunity there. Again, play along. You can also do static, which means that it's not going to move. So, for example, maybe I want to talk about this ocean. So, again, I'm going to put the information on top of the ocean. Again, my preview shows me exactly what it's going to look like. Double click on the orange piece, and that'll say. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I promise you that she will be right back. Uh, <laughs> technical difficulties. But just hang there, grab a water, wash or break coffee, and she will return shortly. See you soon. <laughs> that is a new one for me. I literally just shut down. You're good. Don't worry. They all just went to go get some water, and they came back, and they're refreshed. They stretched it out. You're good. You're good That's now. amazing. Oh, my God. Too funny. Okay. So basically, I got really excited about my uh, shortcuts, and I shut this whole web. Yeah. So anyway, back to where we were. So here I am typing on top of my font and I'm going to make the size bigger and save changes. So again, I can start describing what I have, what I'm seeing. Okay. Um, there are all kinds of 
um, in season one. So again, lots of cool ones around graduation. So those again, just drag and drop those in there. Um, I think this one might be actually invisible. Yeah, so that you can have, um, again, I can tell it's invisible because of the black. I'm guessing, I don't know 100%, but again, once it does say transparent. Um, and again, let's try this one. So another transparent one. Again, looks really neat, very little effort. It's a drag and drop, okay? And finally, one that we, our team uses a lot is call out. So again, instructional videos. Um, these sort of things allow us to draw attention to something. Once we drag and drop it in, I'm gonna double click it. Um, and then I can have it point to various pieces by moving it around here, okay? Um, the next one is audio. So we have all kinds of, free, there's free music. There's also sound effects. So let's do animals. And I'm going to add, again, I'm just picking pigs. And I'm gonna take the pigs and I'm gonna drop it into audio. So now, let's listen. Here is my recording and it's amazing. Goodbye. Can you hear the pigs? I'm gonna increase the audio on that track. <laughs> amazing. Um, so here I am, I'm gonna pause that. And uh, again, all kinds of things in there. So but you can see as I scroll down, there's the audio I recorded and it overlaps my pig sounds, okay? So there's sound, um, all kinds of sound effects in there. And there's also premium music. So it again, gives you different audio options. So I'm gonna use emotional piano and streams and I'm gonna plop it in here. Well, I, I have to shrink it first. So I'm going to grab the end again, it's orange and maybe I don't want the beginning. I want something more in the middle. So I'm gonna grab that and you can see it's green. So it's gonna let me, oh, maybe not. Emotional springs, make that smaller. And grab this side. Again, lots of editing options. Add that in here. And here I go. You can see that it's layered on the other audio. All right. And a little, another little trick is that you can see how loud the audio is by these little wigglies here. So you can see that my pigs aren't particularly uh, noisy because it's much smaller band, whereas when I talk, it's a problem, it's very loud. So you can see that here as well, okay? Um, so that's audio, those are premium musics. One of the things we really like to play with is transitions. So for example, I want to transition between this C, I'm gonna get rid of some of this stuff. It's getting crazy up here. Okay, so here I'm just deleting it, selecting it orange, and then hitting delete, okay? So I want between this ocean and this ocean, I want an ornamental form, all right? So I'm gonna grab this, and I'm gonna just drag and drop where it is. So now I'm gonna push those two together, and you'll see that the transition. Ooh, fancy! All right, here's another one. I'm gonna do curtains between here. I'm gonna go grab another turtle. I'm gonna grab some videos because everybody wants more turtle. Okay, so I'm gonna transition from my C here. Happen, and here's my recording and it's amazing, goodbye. And there's my audience opening for my turtle as well, okay? Um, one of the other things that were in here is, uh, transitions where am I going here okay so transitions and then you could also have additional so these are all just crazier ones you have backgrounds so if I had I'm gonna add that here I'm gonna insert and push and then I'm just gonna take like a an image so here is my bitmoji again so you'll notice that that it just it's a dynamic background behind my bitmoji so that's in backgrounds Okay, I can also use solid. So if I want it to be, um, I want, to, want it to be solid. I can also copy and paste a cop, something that I've used before. So I'm gonna, it's orange. So now I'm gonna do control C for copy. And I'm gonna move down the timeline and I'm gonna go to curl paste. And so I'm gonna have the same image. I wanna use it again. So there it is on the top of a blue background. I just discovered overlays today. So obviously totes, in love with turtles. So again, there's the turtle. 
totally heart breathing. I can also count down to my face. So here I go, counting down and transitioning more turtle and then my face, right? So again, these are all overlays. So they sit on top of the information that you have. All right, okay, just keep it out of time. So another thing that we would also, I mentioned a little bit earlier is green screening. Um, so I'm gonna go back to my media. Actually, this makes it even easier. I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna search the word green. So a green screen is where we can remove in a color from one image and overlay it on another image. So I'm gonna use this handprint. So I can see that it's a countdown five on green. So again, I want the hand to overlay on my turtle, but I don't want the green there anymore. And big tip, green screening is just a term, only because people generally don't wear a lot of green. So it's typically a color we can remove without it screwing up the rest of the image. You can blue screen, but here's the hint, as long as you aren't the color that you are standing in front of, you can green screen any color. So how this works is just this. And again, there's a couple of tutorials in the slide deck on how to do this. So I'm gonna double click on the green and I'm gonna go to this head and shoulders man, okay? Head and shoulders, I'm gonna, it's called color keying. I'm gonna touch this eyedropper once and I'm gonna go over here to the image and my eyedropper follows me. I'm gonna select this because that's the color I wanna get rid of. I'm gonna move my hand. No, I can't move my hand. Okay, so I can image or I can mask it. So I'm gonna image it and I'm gonna hit save changes. So now what do you notice? Even though on the screen, on here, it's in green hand with the, uh, my green, green hand, green screen with my black hand, when I see the preview, you'll notice the hand is on top of my turtle preview. So that's really, really quick demo on how to, how to green screen, okay? Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, so now I'm, I'm very proud of my video. I'm super thrilled by how fabulous it looks. So I'm gonna hit finish. So it gives me a whole bunch of other options. Allows me to choose a thumbnail, so obviously I'm gonna choose the turtle. Uh, I've got my title here, I can export it as a video, as an audio only, that's where your podcasts can come in. Or as a GIF, so again, a GIF or a GIF is a repeating looped image, okay? I can choose SD or HD, okay? SD does much faster, HD is much higher quality, and I can export it to these various locations. What we're asking students to do is put it through to Drive. So I'm just gonna click to Google Drive here, okay? So it's gonna export to WeVideo, it's gonna make a WeVideo link, and it's gonna put it in my drive. I wanna make it public because I wanna be able to share it with people. And now I'm gonna hit export. So it's gonna bring me to this screen. The beauty is now that I'm at this screen, I do not have to keep this window open. I can just let it go and eventually it's gonna send me an email. That's pretty much WeVideo in a nutshell. Um, so I'm just gonna pop back to my uh, other, other video here. Um, so that we can just kind of figure this out. So again, as I mentioned, here's a whole document on how to use color keying because it's something that really engages students. Um, we've seen some really brilliant examples where students have made dioramas out of shoe boxes, then taken video of them uh, of the video diorama, and then green screened students walking around the actual diorama pointing out various things. So really, really neat stuff. I also included some really quick um, examples. So um, this is a really awesome example for English. Uh, it was uh, designed by uh, Catherine Robinson out at St. Pete's. She uh, has, as a, as a practice using WeVideo, again, always recommend that if you're using a tool for the first time in your classroom, make it for no marks, make it for we're just playing. It becomes a great Friday afternoon activity when they're gonna be hanging off the wall anyway. Um, so you, you can use these sort of tools to re-engage those students in that, oh, those you know Wednesday mornings where it's an indoor recess or whatever the case may be. So this is a 30 second video where she said to her students, um, I want you to make a perfume ad. It's either gotta be romantic, mysterious, or sporty. And the students had to use the clips that were already inside 
to make that mood and tone. So again, grade 12, really engaged by that activity. She gave them a really tight timeline. But again, you could do the exact same lesson in grade five. Um, this one is a really great example of a science video. Again, all stock vi video already in Google, uh, already in WeVideo that talks about cell biology. And this is one about climate change for a grade nine geography class. Um, this is another uh, grade 12 university assignment. Um, as opposed to writing an essay, this is about life of pi. They had to show how the book uses mood and tone to demonstrate the setting that the, the students were doing. So again, really, really incredible example. Um, this is another one, a uh, grade nine geography example, uh, where they had to talk about grassy narrows and the pollution there. Again, four minutes, really awesome student example. I wanted to give you some other resources. So BBC Sounds, again, fully um, uh, Creative Commons, no royalty. You can download all kinds of videos, I reckon, or audios. I recommend man, snoring hilariously and man snoring hilariously even more. Um, Pixabay has all kinds of images that are royalty free. Unsplash has stunning images and they're really, really high resolution. And they've also started introducing video. So again, more stock footage that may be different than the stuff that's available in the video. And um, royalty free music, some of them are royalty free, some of them are premium, but it's pretty clearly marked out which ones are which. GIF is, um, they just introduced the GIF option. Again, I would suggest that you play around with it. There are some really great examples on how you, how you can go about using them and how you could do that. But this is a really great example of, you know, I can totally see like some of our teachers dancing and, and putting that out there for their students. Um, there's also the podcasting, as I mentioned. Again, some more resources there on how to use Wee Video for podcasting. And again, there's an entire teacher forum around Wee Videos and how to create. There's lesson ideas here, more step-by-step, -step, so really uh, a slide deck that's very, very step-by-step, uh, -step. and We Video Academy that basically can answer all of your questions. Their, their, uh, their support um, resources are, are really incredible. So again, I haven't put this link up for a long time, but there is questions, or um, if you emailed, or maybe Wake has thought of questions that I hadn't thought about. So I'm gonna just, uh, I'm gonna leave that up while we answer some more questions. Perfect. Stephanie Pearson. I laughed so hard. I hope everybody else enjoyed. We did get a comment from the kind Bonnie saying that we're a hoot. Um, I hope everybody understands that technology can be fun. Uh, I know it can be stressful, especially to learn a new tool. And we video is very complicated, right? When you look at it, there's a lot going on. But we hope that you realize that we learned this tool by just playing around with it. I made it my focus this year because I was not comfortable in it. Um, and you just grow with it. So as much as we can touch on in an hour, less than an hour workshop, just know that the comfort will come with you playing around with it. And to Stephanie's point earlier, the students love it, right? The students love to tinker. They know that things aren't going to be deleted and they're okay if things go away because they know they can get it back. They grew up in that generation, right? So just uh, even if you let them go with the tool, you'll be surprised uh, at what they can accomplish. So Stephanie, the laughs were real. I actually have my Kleenex because I was crying laughing <laughs> so hard. You're just such a joy to listen to. Um, and I just love that you show that like, oops, things happen and let's get back into it. So thank you for modeling that. So we do have some questions that came in. Um, the first question being, what were the ratios for that you showed at the very beginning? Excellent question. So those are, uh, let's make sure that happened. Yeah, so those are um, the size of the video that you're going to create. So it allows you to choose whether you want something that's gonna take up your computer screen or um, like a, a landscape. So for example, a student may have created or captured video on their phone, but done it in the land or in the portrait version. They can, uh, they can make their whole video in portrait or they can do it for like one-to-one, -one, which is a like a Instagram post, like a square post. So depending on where they're gonna publish to, again, great opportunity to talk about, well, what's your audience? Who is going to be watching this? It's not just me as the teacher. Who are you creating this for? And where are they gonna look at that? Again, really important media strand of where, because again, this is the reality of our students are gonna be working in, right? They are gonna live in a techno world and they are 
there are so many jobs right now, like we have an entire department of communications where several of them, their entire job is to understand the difference between ratios, um, one to one versus nine to 16 or 16 by nine. So again, really interesting um, conversations about why we have that as a, and look at the math talk. Ooh, I'm just thinking about that too. So many examples, absolutely. Um, our next question is, I saw how you layered your moving turtle over your moving ocean. Sorry, I'm just thinking of your examples. They make me laugh. Can I use this feature to make videos smaller in a grid style and have students singing like a choir all together? So can they place a oh. bunch of them on top to uh, do that? Well, that's a great idea. So I'm just gonna, can you see what I'm doing here? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add, there's a little add on the far left-hand side. I'm gonna add another couple tracks and we're gonna just try it because that's a great idea. So I'm gonna move my ocean onto track number two and I'm going to learn, move my turtle onto track number three and my hand to track number four. So now I have to go into each one of them and I need to change the scale. So there's scale one. So there you go. And now I'm gonna scale down my turtle, scale it down, and I'm gonna save changes. And now I'm gonna go to my, so you can see there is my uh, hand and you can see my turtle. And I'm gonna scale down this ocean. Look at that. So the answer is yes. Yes, you can. And so now when I play this. Wow. I mean, with the music and everything, can't you get better? I mean, I'm glad it paused on that finger too. All right. So next question. That's, pointer, that's Mr. Pointer. That's Mr. Pointer. All right. Do you have to save as you go? Let's say at the end of the block, uh, students aren't finished their video. Does it automatically save? It does. It does say it down in the very bottom left-hand corner, but again, really helpful tool for the students to learn. Control S saves it, as well as you go into the hot dog and then the save is there as well. Perfect. If we've done a video in Screencastify, can we import it into WeVideo so we can add overlays or voiceovers? Oh, yes, we can. Again, this is how we've done all of the OCSB videos. Um, your Screencastify goes directly into your drive. So you go to import, you go to drive, and then you can pull it in from drive like that. So super, super easy that way. Perfect. And uh, just because I know the context with the majority of people viewing this uh, are educator based, but we do have uh, uh, Sue from our department talking about how she's going to use it to make retirement videos and like other practical examples other than just the classroom base that you can use the video for. Yeah, absolutely. And certainly um, as long as a video file, anybody can create on their phone. And then if you have it in your drive, you can pull it into a wee video to solidify it all. Perfect. If we import a video, can we cut it into pieces so we can add transitions? Absolutely. So one of the things that we've noticed is I'm gonna use my turtle here again. So I'm gonna slide Mr. Turtle down here to my video one option. So what we end up having to do is I'm going to, get rid of some of this stuff back here. So I'm going to, let's say I'm gonna let it go and just as he looks up there, oh, this is actually not good. I'm gonna grab a new one, hold on. Let me grab a new one, uh, this insect. Hope anybody's not has issues with creepy crawlies. Okay, so here's my creepy crawly and I'm gonna play I'm gonna stop it there because that's where I want it to, to transition. And I'm gonna hit this little snip button. So there's my snip. And now I have two different insects. I add a transition, I cross, I drop that puppy in there. Bingo, bango. I have insect to insect. Perfect, awesome. Thank you for the bingo, bango. Um, <laughs> two questions. Can you see how much time is available in the blank spots before you try to shrink and fill the space with audio or video or whatever? Excellent question. So I didn't even get down to this little puppy down here in the bottom right hand corner. So that's your, your, your um, timeline bar. So it'll actually help you zoom in and zoom out. So all of a sudden my very short clips look very long, okay? So again, as I manipulate that, I can see various pieces of information. And so right now I can put that this, let's measure this space here. So this is at 2920 and I get to 
3109, so I know this is about two and a half seconds long, okay? Similarly, I can go to the very front and I can see from zero to not quite a second is what's left in here as well. Perfect, awesome. And then uh, I don't believe I got any other questions. Hopefully they were all answered. Um, the last one was where can we get the slide deck so we can put that up at the very end. But before uh, maybe Steph says her last words, I just wanna say thank you, Stephanie. You're so much fun to listen to. And I know you and I are together all the time, but I just I just so enjoy listening uh, to you because it's fun. Technology is fun and play around with it. We're here to support you. I know a lot of people are using it for leaving ceremonies. Um, students are using it to create things. So lots of versatility in what you can uh, end up using it for. Um, and if you have any other questions, you know who you can reach out to. But Steph, you're just the best. And thank you for those laughs. laughs. And I'll let you you're close welcome. it off. You're very welcome. Thank you for, thank you, Wake, for always being my best brag buddy ever. And uh, for just everybody for sharing your time with us. We really, really appreciate you giving up part of your day uh, to learn with us. And we can't wait to see what you create. So uh, you know, send your videos, throw them on the YouTube and share them with us. We'd love to see what you create because everybody can create. And this can be such a transformative tool to those hard to reach students who are really struggling and, and really need just a different outlet. So. Um, I would really encourage you to, uh, to go down that road. And the other thing is on the PD portal, there's a link to how you can get WeVideo certified. So um, there's various levels of certification involved with that as well. Um, so that's available to you as well. So again, and thank you so much. Thank you. Slide deck one more time. Oh, yes, share this tab. I'll see you. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> I'll tweet this out as well and make sure that's on uh, OCSB LT as well, that you can have an access to it as well. So again, thank you, everybody. We really appreciate it. like lots of things to happen and here is my recording and it's amazing goodbye